welcome to Epworth in Action. This is a program where we talk about our faith in action, not only here at Epworth United Methodist Church, but also in our churches across the entire Chickasha area, as well as the state and world. So this is ministry that we're all called to do as, as disciples of Christ. So glad you've joined us for today's program. I'm Pastor Steve Taylor. I'm the Associate Pastor here at Epworth United Methodist Church. And again, we're glad you've joined us for today's program. Today, we're going to be talking about feeding the hungry and feeding those in need. And there are several entities across the Chickasha area that are able to perform those ministry deeds. And Senior Nutrition is one of them. Also coming up uh, on our later program, we're going to be talking more in depth about the Chickasha Soup Kitchen and that program as it continues to get kicked off and, and that going on. Plus, today we're going to be talking about mobile meals and we'll be talking with Judy Jernigan, who's in charge of that program for the Chickasha area. And so it's going to be a great program where you might learn some things about mobile meals that you maybe did not know. And so, we're, again, we're glad you joined us for today's program. As I was thinking about this program, I was thinking about, you know, what in Scripture talks about, you know, feeding the need, feeding those in need and taking care of those in need. And uh, today, I, I, I thought about Acts chapter 6, and I thought that would be a great uh, place to start. And this is, talks about the choosing of the seven. And I'm reading from the New International Version of the Bible. In chapter 6 of Acts, it says, In those days when the number of disciples was increasing, the Grecian Jews among them complained about the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, It would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers, you choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of spirit and wisdom, and we'll turn that responsibility over to them. And that gives our attention to prayer and ministry of the word. And this proposal seemed to please all those that were there at that meeting. You know, while preaching the word of God and listening to the word of God is vitally important, also ministering to those in need is also vitally important. We're going to be hearing from Pastor Scott Kennett at the end of this program, uh, giving us some encouraging words about feeding the, feeding the hungry. But in today's program, we're going to be speaking with Judy Jernigan, and she's going to be talking to us about mobile meals. So let's go to that interview. I'm sitting here talking with uh, Judy Jernigan. Judy is the board president for the mobile meals program here in the Chickasha area. Judy, thank you and for joining us for uh, Epworth in Action. And thank you. first off, talk about yourself. Tell me who you are. I'm Judy Jernigan, as he said, and... Um I've been working on mobile meals, I think probably 10 years now, okay. got involved and ended up finally being kind of president in the loose term of the last <laughs> eight or nine years. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about the history about mobile meals. We got lots of feeding programs. We got the Senior Nutrition that has a feeding program. Mm -hmm. The Chickasha Soup Kitchen has a feeding program, but mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about the history around mobile meals. Certainly. Um, from my understanding, Mobile Meals started was an outgrowth of the Ministerial Alliance, probably back in about 1984. And some of the, our older members um, said that it started out as a pretty loosey-goosey operation. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't terribly set in stone, but it began delivering meals from the hospital, a hot, nutritious meal five days a week, right. Monday through fi Friday, about in 1984. And when I got involved, it was delivering about 85 meals a day per week from the hospital. And the hospital at that time had a capacity to feed about 100. Okay. Yeah. Now, with all this COVID-19 stuff going on, the isolation, mobile meals has become even more important to some of those folks who, sure. who are in need. So tell me how the response has been during this time of isolation. Well, fortunately or unfortunately, most of our volunteers, of course, have to be or usually are people who are retired. Right. And so therefore, most of them are 60, over 65. And we have a lot of volunteers who are still distributing meals in their 70s and 80s. So when this whole virus came along, we were like, well, we probably can't keep doing this, even though our volunteers 
had formed relationships with their clients and, and wanted to keep doing this. But when it became a mandate that we in the elderly age group had to stay inside, we knew we had to do something. So um, we put a call out to a couple of churches here in town. Um, to I ac actually went to a nail salon <laughs> at the end and realized that those ladies were all out of work. And so kind of made my appeal there. And we got a lot of volunteers through a variety of ways and were able to fill the routes of our older volunteers and kind of go around the virus um, things that were posing us problems. We also saw that all of our recipients got a cooler that we could put the meal in and therefore not go into their house and have contact right. with them. We wear gloves and wear masks and do, all, and do that sort of thing. The hospital also worked with us really well because uh, we talked with them and said, what if you could deliver two meals a day instead of one? One hot meal today and then another meal that they could put in the refrigerator and heat up for tomorrow or do a cold lunch for tomorrow. That would limit the number of contacts we had with them and it would also allow us to try to come up with fewer volunteers than usual. Right now, when I started, we ran around eight routes a day right. with maybe up to 14 or 15 on a route. And I can explain reasons, but down, now we're down to about five routes a day. We're feeding around 46, 48, almost half of the numbers that we used to for various reasons. But, but um, so that is allowed to not have us come up with many, as many people as we have been running with because of the hospital delivering right. two meals at a time. Right. And so you get all your, your meals from the hospital. Always have, I believe, as far as I know. As far as you know. <laughs> Let's talk about Judy Jernigan, though. But why did you really get involved? What's, what's, your, what's your mission here to, as being involved with Mobile Meals? Well, I think, the, I think my emphasis on church has usually been in the helping scope because I think that's what the, the Lord leads. Field, yeah. yeah, that's what the Lord leads us to do. You know, we're not to look inward all the time, but to look outward, outreach also. And not just within our one church, but farther outreach to that, too. It's a, a part of evangelism, right. you know, spreading Christ's word. And even though, even though that is not directly talked about when we deliver to these people, they know we come in Jesus' name. Right, right. And we make that pretty clear. Um, I don't know. I've... I've always had an affinity towards older people. I just enjoy being around them. And I think a lot of the volunteers that you'll find enjoy that also. I think one of the real advantages of having the new volunteers that we've gotten during this COVID virus time is that many of them are younger people and haven't had the chance or the opportunity to deal with these older folks in many times difficult situations that they're in. Yeah. And some, several have expressed to me how eye-opening that has been and also how much they enjoy it. The younger generation, they're, they're the kind of folks who really want to see the fruits of their labor, as per se, right. and sometimes right. they get their eyes open to what really exactly. does go on out there, and it's really, very good for that. situations people are, are in. And I have been encouraged because I hear so many of them saying, I want to help. In the middle of all this, what can I do to help? And that's very encouraging. So mm -hmm. you, we know you have volunteers that deliver the meals, and they, of course, with with volunteers, that kind of the kind of clientele that you all serve is very, I would call it high security, but really through screenings, and right, right. because you know you don't want just anybody delivering a meal to somebody, yeah. but. Uh, you know, financially, I, I think I heard from you when I was talking to you earlier about how, how Mobile Meals is funded. And I was really kind of surprised to hear about some of the ways that it was funded. Well, I guess, first of all, I, I probably should say of how we're not funded. Right. <laughs> and that's where I think I got the most interesting, eye-opening experience for me. Right. Maybe two separate things. I think many people... Um, confuse what mobile meals is as opposed to Meals on Wheels. Meals on Wheels is a national program that gets government funding. Right. 
Uh, mobile Meals does not get any government funding, never has. And uh, that is good in the sense that we can fall, we can feed people that fall between the cracks that may not meet the qualifications of a Meals on Wheels program. And they, and they don't necessarily meet the qualifications of senior nutrition. See, yeah, here. exactly. Right. And, and our funding fell a lot when, I don't remember how many years ago, maybe four or five years ago, Chickasha passed a tax right. that went to senior funding. And we, we make periodic visits to different organizations, churches, civic organizations here in town, and ask for donations. We do letter writing in the paper periodically. And more and more we began to hear, well, we passed that tax just a little while ago to, for, for nutrition, for senior nutrition. And we finally realized that they didn't realize that any of that went to mobile meals. It all went to the senior nutrition centers. So you're not getting any, any funding money. from that city tax for none. senior nutrition? None, okay. none. And so all of our funding and always has come from donations. Now, some, some churches here in town put mobile meals on their budget. You know, some, some organizations, Rotary and, and uh, Junior right. Social Workers and some of those put us on their budget periodically. The Chickasha Foundation has put us on. Altrusa does, sometimes puts us on. But that's totally on a volunteer basis. Most of our com funding comes from people. Some of our funding, our, our clients can pay for part or some of their meal. Most of them cannot. And, and just like anything else, costs go up. And yeah. I think you were telling me earlier that, that the cost for the food that you all receive has gone up. Substantially. And, and unfortunately, that happened around the time that that senior nutrition bill was, was passed. Mm -hmm. And then the cost, hospital costs go up, food costs go up. Right. And so we met with the hospital and said, can we do anything? And also um, Harold Irby from the Nutrition Center came and talked with us and they began to say, maybe some of our mobile meal volunteers, volunteers, clients could be sent to senior nutrition because they began to deliver meals at that time. I think with paid volunteers, I'm not sure. Right. But anyway, he began to take some of our load and we could continue to keep the ones that couldn't qualify for them or that kind of fell through right. the cracks. And so that, because we knew at that higher cost, we couldn't continue funding. We couldn't last another year. Or you couldn't serve as many people. Right, right. So if somebody out there was wanting to maybe make a donation to mobile meals yes how would the individual want to, how would they do that um probably the best way we have a treasure um joyce belleville and her name's been in the paper and she would not mind if i gave that phone number right now and the best way would be to send it to joyce and just make it out to mobile meals and send it to her house and uh, we have had an account at one of the banks here at town and, and keep it where Joyce can deposit. Of course, the banks aren't open right now. So we're do, handling that a little bit differently. But that's probably, let me give you number, her number. Her name is Joyce Belleville and her phone number is 405-224-6225. And she takes care of our all of our treasury and, and makes sure we have deposits in and everything. So. You can also see that number at the bottom of your screen here on how you can get a hold of Joyce as well. Mm -hmm. And and when you would call in to Joyce or I or we get many of our referrals from life from the hospice or from doctors saying, you know, this person needs help for a while or for however long they need. Um, we have a meal qualifier whose name is Donna. And if you call Joyce or I, we can give you her phone number and she would also um, talk with you and see if you would qualify some of the things that we need done through that and I can give you her phone number as well. Okay. Donna's number is 405-459-6700. Um, okay. okay. 
So you got, has, with all this, have you had any, an uprise in applicants as per se? Because. Um, this, since there was an article in the paper a couple of weeks ab right. ago about how Mobile Meals was handling the COVID virus. And we have gotten actually five new clients on since that time. So as the more, the more, um, media coverage of some sort that we get, people do tend to call. Right. And um, we can't obviously take anybody. You do have to fit some requirements because it's just not a give out program to exactly. anybody, but to people who really need it. And the quali qualification usually means that you're at home by yourself or um, you're not able to prepare a meal on your own. You maybe don't have any family around who's able to help you right. prepare a meal. It doesn't, it's not really based on age too very much um, where like senior nutrition is. So that's why I'm talking about falling between the cracks a little bit. Right. Right. So last comments, anything else you'd like to show our viewers or tell our viewers about Mobile Meals? It's just really a good program. I think many, many people here in Chickasha depend upon it and I think I think that's why we felt so strongly during this virus that we didn't want to put our clients at risk and I didn't also, we didn't want to put our um, volunteers at risk to bring this food, but we also knew the program could not stop because people are reliant on it. And so fortunately it helped us think outside the box. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Judy Jernigan, the board president for Mobile Meals, thank you for being with us on today's thank program. You, Steve. Thank you for having Coming me. Coming up, we're going to hear some great encouraging words from our senior pastor, Reverend Scott Kennedy. Coming up. In the sixth chapter of uh, the Gospel of John, uh, there's, there's a story that's told about Jesus. Uh, I guess they're mostly about Jesus, aren't they? Jesus is uh, out by the sea, and a lot of people have come around. He's talking, he's preaching, he's ministering to the people. Uh, I mean, lots of people. It says 5,000 people showed up. And they were there, and whenever the day was coming to an end, uh, Jesus realized uh, they were hungry. And he talks to the disciples about, what are we going to do? And they said, oh, we don't have enough money to feed all these people. And, and, um, and he begins to think about how they, they might serve these folks in their need. Uh, Andrew, one of the disciples, uh, meets a boy who has uh, five loaves of bread and two fish. And uh, he brings them to Jesus and says, Will this help? And, uh, and he says, you know, I think it will. And he has everybody sit down. He breaks the, the bread and the fish and distributes it to the people. Everyone uh, is fed, and there's, there's food left over. It's, it's one of Jesus' amazing miracles where uh, through the, the blessing of, of the gift that was shared, uh, the, the real human spirit and spiritual needs of people were, were met. Uh, people who were hungry were fed. And spiritually, those who had come uh, were fed through his teaching and ministry with them. Um, the, the two important things. Um, one is that, that God cares about our physical need. And as we've uh, talked about today, uh, God cares when we are hungry. Uh, God wants us to be full. And uh, Jesus, in the way that he served the uh, feeding of the 5,000, uh, reached out for that human need. Uh, that's happened all around the uh, Chickasha today, each day. Um, meals that are, are provided to help feed those who are hungry through the soup kitchen, through mobile meals. Uh, all these are ways that people are reaching out to be the very physical uh, hands of, of Christ to, to make a difference in someone's life. God cares about our spiritual needs, but God cares about our physical needs. Another thing about the, the story is that uh, when the boy steps up to volunteer, he brings what he has and, and that God likes to work in partnership and use the ministry and gifts that we have. So this boy shares with his gift and uh, Christ blesses that. Just as the, the people in Chickasha, as they respond uh, to be Christ's presence here, uh, God blesses that and, and uses it to reach out and to, to meet people's needs. All the way through the, the Gospel of John, uh, every time Jesus serves in ministry, it's a way of pointing us to who God is, uh, that God is love, that God cares about us, that God wants us to know that love in our hearts 
and to, to be fed uh, spiritually. So we want to bless these ministries that uh, they're a part of and help you put your faith into action. Thanks, Scott. And again, thank you for joining us for Epworth in Action. I want to remind you this program debuts on Wednesday evenings at 7 o'clock on our Suddenlink Cable Channel 6 in Chickasha on Suddenlink Cable. It also is live streamed at six at seven o'clock rather at on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Chickasha UMC, or you can catch us live on Facebook Live as well at seven o'clock on Wednesday evenings. Of course, you can always go back and view the recordings if you missed them. Again, thank you for joining us for Epworth in Action. Until next time, I'm Pastor Steve Taylor, and we'll see you later. Mm-hmm.